everyone. Before I present my topic, I'd like to do a short exercise with all of you. So I'd like you all to close your eyes. Close the eyes. Come on. All right. I want you to picture that you're at the beach. It's a beautiful day. The sun is shining. The waves are roaring. And there's a nice breeze going. And you don't have a care in the world. Now open your eyes again. I want you to keep that image in the back of your mind as I describe to you something from Lieutenant James journal when he landed in Hawaii in 1778. He said, the men sometimes 20 or 30 go without the swell or the surf, lay themselves flat upon an oval seat piece of plan about their size and their breadth. They keep their legs close on top of it. Their arms are used to guide through the plank, are used to guide the plank through the water, and they wait until the greatest swell sets upon the shore and they all together push forward with their arms to keep on top and it sends them with the most astonishing velocity. So what he's describing here is the first ever recorded incidence of surfing. Now the history of surfing predates the camera. So of course there's some history that wasn't able to be captured on film. But today I would like to share with you the evolution of surf photography. This is not a subject that I had known a lot before going into this. But after a couple of hours of research, I'm pretty confident in being able to share this with you. Most of us as, as Southern Californians have been down to the beach, have seen surfers, have gone to the surf stores, so hopefully this better helps you understand surf photography and also the culture of surf. I'll be focusing on three points in time, the revival area, the revival era, the golden age, and the present day. It sounded like you just pushed the display button and that turned the projector off. You're not supposed to touch it at all. What am I supposed to do? Now we're going to pause. Sorry. I don't want to yell at you, but it's we have to wait for a minute for that to cool down. Only the picture view. Never touch this. Never touch the display button. <laughs> I need a big piece of tape to go over it or something. It's okay. I'm not panicky because you know what? People aren't here. We may have plenty of time. It's unfortunate though, since you had such a nice start to your speech and you were moving along smoothly and suddenly you get a big rock. It's like you Yeah. Huh? Let us turn it back on until it's shut off. Take a minute to warm up. Let me remind everybody, don't touch the display button, only the picture mute. I paused your time, by the way. Although I let all of this run on camera. Well, I can show it in the future. And when people say, why is it you can't do that? I'll say, well, let me show you. Father of modern surfing. 
he started a surf club called the Kui Nalu Surf Club with some of his friends, and they are all credited with the rebirth of surfing. One of the people in that club was A.R. Gurry Jr. He um, is considered the father of surf photography. He was an avid surfer, which is very important because there's this relationship between the photographer and the surfer, knowing um, how to capture his subject and at what angles would make, um, make a good picture. And so Duke brought a lot of popularity to the sport, being an Olympic gold medalist. He, he had presentations of surfing on the East Coast, in California, in New Zealand, and in Australia. And he used that popularity to, again, just bring some, um, to just shed some light back into the sport of surfing. Now, A.R. Gray Jr., he would normally stand in a canoe, sit in a canoe, be on the pier to be able to take these shots of the surfers. He probably used just a very common camera at the time, one of them being the Kodak Brownie camera. It was, um, it was mass produced around the 19, 1910s. So that was most likely one of the cameras he used and how he captured his pictures. Technology was very limiting, black and white. He could not get the camera wet at all. And the next era is the golden era. And so this is just an explosion of surf culture. One of the prominent photographers of the time is named Leroy Granis. He um, learned to surf at the age of 14. He made his own board shorts, he made his own boards, he saved up to go on surf trips. And um, after World War II, he just stopped surfing, he settled down, he had a job, and he was actually diagnosed with a stress-related ulcer. And so what he did, living just a few blocks away from the beach, is he would uh, take pictures of the surfers just to relax and not, not to stress out so much. And it was sort of a natural process for him being a surfer and just taking pictures of this awesome culture that was happening all around him. One of the pictures that he took is of Mickey Dora. He's one of the most famous surfers of the time. He's actually doing a Dora tap, where if someone is awake, he would just kind of like tap them off the board and just keep on surfing. He set himself apart from other surfers of the time because the way he moved on the board, his footwork and arm work, and um, so he was also a very influential person. And again, we see this relationship between the photographer and the surfer, knowing that the photographer does surf and understands what's going into a good picture and also having a subject who's a very talented surfer. But because it was such an explosion of surf culture, Leroy had um, just tons and tons of subjects to capture. It wasn't this big emphasis on just one person making the sport popular. It was an explosion of different people getting into surfing. And so he, when he first began uh, taking pictures, he used a very standard East German 32 millimeter camera. And um, eventually, as technology progressed, he was able to obtain an underwater calypso camera, which was produced in 1960. It was able to take pictures 200 meters beneath the water surface. And so this way, he was able to get into the water, and he was able to surf next to other surfers and take pictures of them. And there's just this, um, this whole another um, dimension to surf photography now that there's so many different angles he can get and things that only the surfers can see. Now he's able to capture on film and share with people. And so these are just a few of his pictures, seeing that he gets really close to someone in the tube. He's right there in the water capturing his subjects. And so that leads us to our present day era. The um, surfing is a globally recognized sport now. So many there's so many professional photographers, or so many professional surfers such as Bethany Moda, Kelly Slater, uh, Chris Moore, Andy Irons, Stephanie Gilmore, John John Morris. There's just so many people who are surfing and just pushing the boundaries of the sport and exploring um, really unknown areas of the earth where they can just get these awesome swells and great pictures. And there's not always room for a professional photographer to come on them with surf trips and always be capturing what they're doing. So what a lot of surfers use is a GoPro. And so um, they're able to capture it on their own. And they can attach it to a helmet or to their surfboard. And the GoPro actually stems out of um, surf culture being that um, 
the inventor of it, Nick Woodman, he developed a wristband that the cameras could be attached onto. And him being an avid surfer himself, he just wanted to be able to capture this, the sport better, and it just stemmed out of his own personal interest. So in conclusion, I have highlighted the three main eras of surf photography, which is the revival of surfing, the golden era, and the present day. So Stephanie, what did you think? Um, the strong points of this presentation, um, I love that you included the first picture taken of surfing. I think that's um, interesting and it grabs our attention. Uh, the visual aids were simulated. Uh, they actually encourage us to listen more of what you have to say about uh, the topic. You show dominance. I like that you're physically active when you are showing the body position of surfing. Mm, my only problem with this was um, letters in the presentation and slides one, two, and I think it was seven, uh, because it kind of distracted me from what you were saying instead of uh, trying to focus on what you were talking about. I, I was kind of reading, but uh, it still was um, it still was effective. The citation, I didn't hear a lot of them. Uh, however, I think overall you did a good job, and it, it was a pleasant um, speech. Well, like I said earlier, I thought you had a, a nice start to the speech with an interesting visualization. I don't know that it's necessary for people to close their eyes, but the idea of uh, putting yourself on a beach with the uh, water is a, is a fun one. And then you transition very nicely to that description of uh, the uh, first person, uh, the first outsider, I guess, talking about uh, surfing. I thought that that was pretty effective. There's a very clear statement of what your purpose is for the speech, and I, I thought that that was excellent. Uh, and you provide a little bit of a background justification for this. Look, we live in Southern California. There's a surf culture here. Most of us have encountered something like that. We ought to know what's going on around us. So I thought that that was fine. Uh, and there's a, a very solid layout of what the structure is going to be in the speech. <coughs> so you're set there. Uh, the supporting material in the speech, I didn't really hear many source citations. I heard information about the historical events uh, and figures. I know that you have got that information someplace, but I couldn't tell you where it came from because it's not included in the presentation. Uh, I was a little bit unclear as to what, why we went from, you know, there was a revival of surfing, why did it disappear for the hundred years between the time it was first described in your quote and the first uh, pictures that were taken that you described and, and showed us. Uh, it wasn't quite clear why there had to be a revival of surfing. And then when we went from that revival period to the golden age, I, I'm going, well, what happened in the intervening time? Was there uh, a, a lull in surfing? Was there a disinterest in it? Was it, was, it? was it going thriving, but nobody was paying attention to it because there wasn't any photography? I don't quite know that sort of thing. What, what, the eras that you picked, I think it makes sense. I just am trying to wonder why they exist. You know, and, and I thought that was something that got left out of the presentation. Um, when you move from point to point, it, it's clear that you are moving to another section. It needs to be a little bit more graceful. I think the visuals help you a little bit. We, they remind us that we're going from one point to another. But your language, I think, is a little abrupt. When you listen to it, it sounds like sharp left turn here, and we're at this, you know, at this new topic. There's got to be some way, even an explanation, for instance, you know, after the revival period, surfing grew, but it was not widely known. It wasn't until the 1950s that there was a golden age that came along when surf culture started inundating uh, the broader culture. And that's so something like that, some kind of passage or language that would make that transition a little bit smoother instead of kind of the abrupt, you know, flash thing that we get in, in uh, your presentation. 
I thought the visuals were integrated pretty well into the speech. I know you had a little bit of problem with the technology. Sometimes if you're not in the program, it changes a little bit, and that may have been the problem because it worked when you tried, tested it out the first time, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's just, it's one of those things, experience comes along, and since you don't, haven't had the chance to do this like this before, it's, it, we run into those kinds of issues occasionally. It's unfortunate. It wasn't a, a dramatic issue. I thought the pictures were large and fine. To me, the things that I think were underdeveloped were the uh, things that were unique about photography and the way it changed in those different time periods. I, you, the first set of pictures that you had in the revival period, they were pretty static, you know, the brownie camera, that kind of thing, and you're talking about it, and you can see that they're watching people go by, you know, even if they get on the water, it's, it's not the same kind of picture. And then you show us some other kinds of images from that golden age, and I, I think you need to talk a little bit more about what they're doing and how it's different and why it was more innovative and why, what it did for uh, the surf uh, sport um, culture, you know, that sort of thing. And I, you're a little bit better when you get to the GoPro thing, although I'm missing you know, particular references. You show the cameras on the helmets and you show the cameras some places. I want to see more of the pictures that, that are being taken by those cameras and then show us, you know, here's something that you could never get before. You know, here's the shot from the front of the surfboard facing back or from, you know, facing forward. Here's the point of view from somebody's camera that they've got on their head while they're surfing or some of those wrist shots that came along when he had that first uh, apparatus that attached the camera to the wrist. And look how different they are to the pictures that we had before, which were dynamic in that golden age, but look how different they are in this one. That, I think, that was the focus of your speech, and I, instead we got personalities a little bit more. Um, and the personalities are interesting, but they're not really the thing that you're talking about. Gesundheit. Right. Uh, you reminded us about what the structure was. I think you could do a little bit more summarizing on those points. Then you, then you need a little bit uh, fancier exit line, something that's maybe a little more interesting, that's also clear that it's the end. But what you had was fine. You know, it just could be better. All right, thank you.